Most of Pennsylvania has felt our presence. We're gonna lose the shot! Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo, and this is part two of our epic road trip. First to pick up Mikey's Challenger in Ohio, and then to keep rocking all the way to Kentucky. So far, we've left our shop and gone about 40 miles and made it to Zach's house. This thing is leaking oil out the rear main seal like crazy, and that's not our big issue. Our big issue is that it's blowing smoke everywhere out of the breathers we were worried about the rings it seems to be running fine so far but we zipped into zach's shop here's zach's camaro his dad's diablo and he thinks he's got we're gonna do like a double pcv recirculation into the intake system just to try to get it from going right in directly into our face from the giant holes that is still in the couch Please take a second and go over to the Stay Tuned merch store. We've got a rack of shirts from the original Stay Tuned shirt, Angelo's Gym. We're going to lose the shop, and there's lots of stickers too. And we finally have Stay Tuned hats for sale. Go grab them at the merch link while they last. All right, if you're not following along, this is a 1964 Dodge 440, which is the mid size car. It's also called a 330 or a Polara or Polara 500, all depending on trim levels. This is a 440. It's got a 383 uh, four barrel motor under the hood from 1967. I got a little bit of a hot cam and I bought this car and it had been sitting in a body shop in Maryland, just sort of dormant, waiting to be revived and sort of rotting away for the last 21 years or so. Okay, stealing the PCB off his Axe Camaro. Uh, I think we need to grom it too. Yeah, we need to grom it. It's good to have a parts car. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah, that's a big hole there. There's a port. That's good. Double ports, right? I don't know about this. Maybe like a lot of tape. We can make that one happen. Here, one of them is Hold on. All right. So to fit this PCV, we're going to wrap it in some heater hose after I wrap it in some electrical tape and then shove it in the grommet. It's a multi-tiered system. It's highly scienced out. See, when you have problems with an old car, you want to hit it with some science. Electrical tape gets thicker quicker than you think. Mm -hmm. Good seal. Precision fit right there. Cut her down. Oh, you guys have good blades. Jeez. All right. Let's stick it in. Oh, nope. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Bring it back. Should have left that longer so it would stop on the. Just run into the rocker. Raffle in there? Yeah, there is. Okay, I'm go back this way. Yeah, you got more hose. I do. You want to give me an inch? Like maybe it's too, 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 too much slash. Too, such a V. Take another like quarter inch off of the top. This guy. I was just, well, you went. Well, this is my base. It's supposed to be the base. You went. Yeah, but it's it's putting the V too it's close to the It's way in there. It's fine. It's not way in there. It's barely. It's barely clearing the surface. Look. Oh no! Yeah. It's like a quarter inch. Oh, that's good. Now it's folded over. Ship it. <laughs> it's fine. Ship it. All right. So let's see what it does. Fire it up. All right. We have our double PCB rocking now so all of that vapor uh, you know oil smoke you know, coming out of the breather is now going back through the motor and hopefully we're done with the smoke for a while when it hit the road it's still making good oil pressure and it's still running really cool so i'm excited we only got 470 more billion miles to go and 95 percent of the way yeah we've gone four percent of the way we've done exact commute that he does every day so far and we're off for adventure here we go made it like two miles. It was less smoky and then it was way more smoky. We did like an uphill rip around some cool turns out here in Central PA. And uh, I, I think we might have just like laid a bunch of oil on the rear main seal. It's pouring out. It's smoking like crazy. It's under the car. You can see it dripping pretty, pretty consistently there. We have 700 miles to go something to, to Kentucky, so we gotta come up with a solution, I guess. Our solution is going to be try it and see how it works. Real man of genius. Losing some oil for sure. Hopefully, here's on the turnpike, maybe we can get like a pad or something under there for a challenge. Out run the smoke. Out run the smoke. We're just gonna keep on rocking and see what happens. Well, that's
that didn't work. That might be the guy. Yo, let's do it. All right, our goal is to try to keep the oil from hitting the headers. Mikey found an old cable box behind a gas station. <laughs> and uh, it's about to get wild in here. I like it. Let's get real tools, but that's a good call. Alright, let's get What is that thing? It's a cable. It's got a lot of input now, but... Yeah, well, there's two pieces of metal on it. That part's true. <laughs> the plan is we don't have a torque converter cover, and we think that it's dripping down the rear main seal, hitting the torque converter, and just being flung around like spin art all over the headers and it's just making a smoke show for everyone behind us. The goal is to somehow take part of this cable box, cut it to shape with a hacksaw, and we also gotta get a... I got a drill? It's got a drill. And get it to fit over the front of the transmission, and at least the oil can drip down it, and everything will be good. And it won't hit the torque converter, it won't get thrown on the headers. We can just drive down the highway in peace. Here we go. Uh, when was your last tetanus booster? This is just for my own knowledge. Yeah, I don't think it's going to apply today, but I'd like to know who is your PCP. <laughs> oh, that's your problem right there. There's a nice living in this thing. All right. All right, let's cut it. That's, that Mike. fits the flat uh, half-inch drive, that fits the round half-inch drive. Mike's favorite tool in his toolbox. He got all, a bunch of his tools stolen years ago. They thought he misplaced old Pipey. He thought it was gone forever. So he found I, it. I didn't want a pumped. different toolbox. He was pumped when he found it. That's the one thing I would have picked? Yeah. All right. I feel that's got, I'm restored. My faith in this is restored. Roll project. You want me to saw all some stuff? I think we're looking at like 13 inches by about three inches. That's this right here. Huh. <laughs> Maybe. Market. Yeah. Here we have our completed oil diverter 8000 model. Uh, it has a flap over here for extra strength. It has these cool uh, slots. These are called louvers. These are for oil drainage and cooling. And then I'm going to replace the quarter 20 machine screws with these ridiculous foam screws for building a deck because that's what we've got. I got the blue lock. Oh, yeah, a little All Loctite right. in there. She'll be good. The holes line up surprisingly well. I can only get one arm in here. Ah! <laughs> can you grab me that? Oh, good, because that's that's about all she's going. Put the second one in there. Good. The second one's more of a locator. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Look at it. That's incredible. She's gonna work for it. Do you see what's under there? <laughs> one high-tech piece of 90s laser disc technology. We're gonna rock the oil diverter 8000. Let's hit it. Pennsylvania has felt our presence today. We're like fucking Hansel and Gretel, spot all the oil drips. It's 
since I got this thing, I bought it for 3,500 bucks with a parts car. We did two quick quarter panel repairs, patch panels we cut out of the parts car. Did a big firewall repair. Everything was really rusty and crusty. Uh, we threw new carpet in it, got the better seat, threw a cover on that. Put a 68 Dodge Charger 323 Posi Shore Grip in the back. This breaks all the way around. A couple of suspension pieces with QA1 shocks and the strut bars. And we're basically trying to take it on the road after all that stuff. And the, the transmission just said no, it was slipping, it was making a huge racket. And I managed to find, this is a 64, so it's the last year of the push button 727, which is like the coolest thing ever. Just on the side here, there's one park lever, and I've got buttons for first, second, third, neutral, and reverse. This way weird old school technology, which I think is super rad. And uh, we got a rebuilt, worked up transmission with a high stall torque converter, a shift kit, and a slip modernized yoke. slip yoke drive shaft. The whole thing is in there. That stuff's working great. What's not working right now is that this thing is smoking like it's James Bond 007 in here. Bond. James Bond. We're going flat. It's pretty good. The rear main seal is leaking like crazy, and the more we put angle into this thing, the more it's throwing it past that seal. You know what's nice is no one behind us will get bit by mosquitoes. No. For sure. So we've got that going for us. Killing all the mosquitoes and most of our brain cells. It's really altruistic what we're doing here, you know? It's for the greater good. Anyway, this is my buddy Mikey. We've been bros for two decades. Yeah. And uh, he's got a sweet 1973 Challenger with a 70 front end on it with a 383 that doesn't quite smoke this bad. 64 383. Cool. Oh, we can trade that. Yeah. Anyway. We well, could trade, uh, and we're gonna Force pick it down. up. It's in central Ohio. We're trying to drive this thing all the way out there, grab his car, wake it up, fire it up, and cruise like a couple of Blue Angels choreograph formation, formation style, all the way out to Bowling Green, Kentucky for the Holly Mo party. Yeah. We'll see what happens. We have gone a total of 55 miles. And it's not looking great. So check back in on the next breakdown. Situation update. It's still smoking pretty bad. Sure is. We got these long extended uphills that we're just throwing oil out on the headers. We're about to get on the turnpike. That's the PA turnpike that runs the length of the state. I think if it's level, we might have a chance at this. As the oil drips out, we might get low enough. Yeah, we just need to lose like half a quart. If we lose half a quart, we might be a little bit better off. My eyes are on fire. The road is burning. And, uh, you know, we're doing our best. We're doing our best. After smoking out about 80 miles of the Pennsylvania Turnpike, we pulled over and our plan is to try and replace the rear main seal of this engine in a hotel parking lot. Uh, we have, we went out and bought a jack, a bunch of oil and some brake clean and a rear main seal. And we're gonna get down and dirty and see if we can make it happen. It's supposed to be able to be possible without taking the transmission off. So we'll see what happens. Most importantly, we went out outside of Harrisburg and ordered up what looks to be- That's like a six. The best, this, are you nuts? The best look at pizza out here. That looks great. What do you Under say? Under promise, over deliver. Come on. Okay. All right. Take a bite. You tell me. Okay. Oh, thank you. Come on, Jersey boy. Uh-huh. Seven. What's up? Seven and a half. I'm happy to have it. Yeah. Let's get to work. All right. Forgot to bring warm clothes. So guess where we are? Middletown, home of the Blue Raiders. And we are gonna try to replace this rear main seal in a hotel parking lot. We ran around, stopped at auto parts store, grab a jack, jack stands, rear main seal, five cans of brake clean, and a couple of flashlights. We're gonna get down to business. Apparently, you can replace it with the engine and transmission in the car, so we're gonna find out. We're down here, yanging this oil pan out. The oil diverter 8000 is still hanging tough somehow, which is incredible. Didn't do much, but it fits like a glove. Yeah, it's not bad. 
we've upcycled some fucking <laughs> discarded electronics. I gotta stop saying fucking and everything so you can maybe use it. This is a name. family show, Mikey. Know, like, we don't talk like that, dude. We I... don't say electronics on the show. <laughs> Get this oil pan out of the way, which will probably need to jack the motor up to do. And then the rear main seal and the main cap for the back of the crankshaft are the same holder. It's all one piece. We're going to try to get that out of there, dig the seal out, clean it up, and then slide a new one in somehow and make it all stick. We'll see if that happens. Pretty sure we're going to have to do all the caps. We should have probably bought a torque wrench. Now, nah, torque by hand, by feel. Yeah. All right. All right. Where's that? Shoot her. I'll get the front out. Is that all the bolts? Yeah, let's uh let's jack this engine up by the, the balancer. Oh, I love that idea. Give two by fours I'm gonna put between it, that'll be great. There's one more bolt. Alright, what are you thinking? Snap snap the neck of this thing right there? That. Yeah, the idler arm? Yeah. You can actually the but you don't want to break anything out. You can unbolt the idler arm, slide it out of the frame, and then it'll just we don't have to like try to smash anything or you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, but is that what you're gonna do? I'd like to. I think that way. Well, it's if gonna not, be a lot more difficult to get in. You got a hammer? Yes, I do. I have a little mini sledge. You got a fork or what? Or you're just gonna wail on it. Oosh! Wow. Okay, let's try it. You just need something to. Hold on. Am I on top of something? All right. Give her the juice. That you old. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Sorry, whoa. take that, you old electronics. <laughs> give me, <laughs> give me the tools. I want to put them back by the station. Cause you gotta scoop them fast. Eh, I don't give us some space. Okay, good. That's it. seals in the right direction that's a good thing all right we cleaned it all off got all the old sealing off there was a ton of blue silicone in there got it all off we're just gonna do the bottom because the top is like impossible to move without taking the trans and lowering the crank a bit so we got the seal in with the big lip facing the fore front of the engine tony is just getting some sealant in on the seams and then we're gonna do the side seals and the bottom lubed but no silicone Get it back in there and hope that's going to make a big difference. Top inch. No, it's not coming out. There it is. Okay. Just a smear. All right, give it a kiss, send it home. Now, this is going to be more difficult than you expect because it's a very tight side seal here to, uh, keep them in place. I think those little black things are tools to help push the side seals up. Okay, I see what you're saying. Uh, dab your finger on some oil and put it on the main seal and on the side seals. On the outsides? Yeah, yeah. Just the sealing surface. Just to lube it on the way in. There's not really any oil left in this thing. <laughs> Well, get it from underneath. Yeah, I'll get it Bro, off the touch headers. the frame. Yeah, I'll get it off the headers. We'll be all right. This is the tricky part. You want more glue on top? I mean, they're two machine surfaces. Like, the tiniest bit of sealant will seal it. Yeah, I don't know. Remember the fire hose of oil that's coming out of this thing before. Hold it up. Okay. 
Do the back ones by hand. They're aluminum. Cool. All right, we have replaced the bottom half of the rear main seal. Hopefully that is a big improvement. Mikey's filling it with oil. We found a loose alternator belt. I'm gonna deal with that. Retie up some fuel line, and I guess we'll crash for a few hours and hit the road. That's Good. better, yep. Oh yeah, crashing off. I don't wanna disrespect the Blue Raiders. Wow. Yeah, quality. I did it. <laughs> uh, all right, <laughs> cool. <laughs> So, we, the car's all back together. We noticed the alternator was sitting really funny and it wasn't charging. Found a broken bowl, which is gonna keep us stuck here until the store's open. We were thinking about just grabbing a nap and hitting the road. We have to wait till we can get to a hardware store to find a six inch bolt for that alternator. But as soon as that happens, we're gonna fire this thing up and head west. Yeah. See what it does. Try to keep that oil inside. Yeah. In the car. Yeah. Yeah. I like in it. The engine. Keep it in there. All right, let's go to bed. It's a whole new morning. We got a sweet alternator bolt from a local hardware store. I'm starting to install it. Hopefully the silicone has dried on our rear main seal repair. And we can just get right down to business. Business of going to Ohio. We've made it 80 miles. We have like 600 more to go. 700? A lot. 700. 700. Yeah. We have a lot to go. All right, digging into my little Dorman automotive electrical repair kit. This is a nice emergency kit. Anything you need, what's good is they have wire nuts in case you want to like just really slap something together, which I love. It's going to go right to the positive of the ignition coil. This is a basic ignition system that just has regular 12 volts. Run that over to the alternator. It'll work with the key. We won't forget to turn off the alternator and burn it out. We will be back on the road in no time. Oh boy. I like it. All right, it's running, it's charging, it's not smoking. We have a million hours to go. We're going to get on the road and see what happens. Gas car, go. smoking pretty bad when we left. It was hard to tell if we'd made any kind of improvement and about 10 miles in, it just kind of started getting better and better and better. And we have been ripping down the highway at 65 plus since. We basically cleared up, smoothed out. Right, it was sitting rock solid cruising, 175 degrees, coolant temp, and 75 PSI oil pressure. And we're rolling, 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 and we're coming out of this beautiful valley. It's gorgeous out here. Lush green PA hillsides and all of a sudden it was a 210. So it's a little bit warm. I don't know what happened. If we lost a little bit of cooling here and there and now it's bad. We got some gas and sheets. We're gonna push this thing back, let it cool off and check the check the water, I guess.
Okay, we are getting Mikey behind the wheel of this, the white ghost, and uh, we're gonna get on rocking. We're about four and a half hours from his place in central Ohio. We're gonna get that Challenger fired up ASAP. Uh, it got a little bit hot. We just cooled it off, added some more water, and we're gonna see what it does, fingers crossed. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Let's rock. No, we'll All right, we made it another 70 miles or something with Mikey cruising. Uh, behind the wheel of the white ghost, I think I'm calling this thing maybe now. Uh, and it got hot. It got warm, then it got warmer, and then it got hot, which is to be expected. It's just not that efficient. We're cruising on some pretty big gnarly hills. I don't know. I think our plans are try to find an overflow bottle, get a new cap, and uh, maybe pick up a thermostat. Just burp as much of this junk out as we can. We're, we, we, we got here on our own power, just so that's clear. We have made it this entire way. Just creeping along the hills. Just, just creeping, just creeping. And there's some brown stuff coming out and some green stuff. It's not He's great. He's good for it, loosens it all up. Oh, yeah. I think that's what's happening. We got flushes. Why is that? See that anyway? That one's green and that one's brown. It's so weird. He really did it, though. About 13.8, which is a little on the high side. I don't know if we have a voltage regulator in this car at all. I guess we would have needed to do that. In the exciter, I gotta see how it's out. I gotta remember the wiring thing. All right, well, our battery almost exploded and it's been stinking up the car like crazy. So, not good. I'm gonna figure it out and try to fix it. All right, so we do have a voltage regulator in this big old school box. I'm not super used to it. It's kind of a generic one. Yeah, whatever this thing is. The Dodge ones that I'm used to, like the little flap guys, three things with the two holes, two, two connectors. Yes. Uh, can you see if there's continuity between the blue wire here and the feed of this thing? It's like it's five inches. Why is it not getting the 12 volts that we know it gets? Isn't that weird? No, we're gonna figure. We're gonna figure this out. Get back. Okay, so maybe it... Something. Yeah? Yeah. It's only the same wire, I don't know. You got a good bite into it. All right, I'm gonna flip the switch. Tell me if it has 12 volts of that thing. Hold on. Hold on, let me get set up so I can see the change. All right, go ahead. The battery's disconnected. That's why I, I'm like, why am I not getting voltage at this alternator? 12, 12, 12, 12 volts, 12 and a half, yeah. Okay. Do you want to take, turn it off and see again? Now see what you have. What do you mean? All right, here, let me do it this way. So plug this, so we have our 12 there. So it should have been working, is my, is my, what I'm saying. It was wired up to, to regulate the alternator. It just, maybe that voltage regulator is bad, which is a bummer, but. Oh, this. Well, so maybe the chassis ground is bad because of all the paint. No, I'm getting 12 and a half on that side. Okay. Outside, yeah, for sure. All right. Snipping the exciter wire there. That was definitely live for some reason. These are on. And we're gonna rock uh, just on battery power to the auto parts store a few miles away. And see if we can get an old trigger that it works. We do have one and it's wired up. It just wasn't working before and, well, it's not working now. We just crossed into Ohio. Dodge is ripping. There's no smoke coming out of this thing, really. It's been a killer. It's, solid, it's been solid. It's I haven't put a drop of oil in this thing today since we built it last night. We also haven't checked it in like two stops. That's good. Yeah. No, that's not true. It is true. This last one we didn't. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. We're having an issue with the battery charging. In fact, it's not. We hot wired the alternator, no voltage regulator, and overcharged the battery. I don't know what we were thinking, but it just Oh, we smelled it, we fixed it. Yeah, we, we cut the wire to the exciter on the alternator so it's not charging. We're trying to make it on battery power, another 47 miles, Summit Racing, to get the parts we need and uh, get it figured out. Yeah. So we don't lose the shop. We can't lose the shop. I don't want to lose the 
shop. If we don't get this Dodge Fort Forty to Kentucky, we're gonna lose the shop. We're gonna lose the shop. Just kidding. We'll just probably tow it there yeah. or something. But so far, I haven't gone a single mile. We have not set foot in that Dodge back there, that Dodge Ram, and that's Timmy's driving. That thing is purely for filming and for getting us pizza. <laughs> Summit Racing, grabbed everything we need. We got a fan wiring kit for an electric fan that we've had in the back the whole time. I got a voltage regulator pigtail. I picked up one of those at a little shop down the road. Uh, we got uh, basically everything we need. I got a thermostat and a water pump. I don't know that I'm going to throw those in right here, but we've got them. We're going to throw them in. It's running a little bit cooler, uh, but we want to be prepared for any climate. You know, they have the Summit. They've got a couple things on the shelf here. In case you wanted it, 8 billion square feet of car parts. The only thing I wish is we had more time. We could dig through all the off the shelves and all the, all the open box buys, but we had to keep on running. But they're going to work either way. Gonna stand there all night. I didn't know. Are you taking video? Yeah, dude. I want this big reveal. Look at that thing. We have made it to Mikey's family spot in Ohio. This is his 1973 Challenger, wearing a 1970 front end. Uh, it's a little bit musty, but it's gonna fire right up. You got a 33. Right up. First, How long have you been sitting? Well, yeah, I was here last month. Last month? How about a month? Oh, so he cheated. Uh, he did it then too. <laughs> Take a few more cranks to fill the bowls back up out of here.
in the Ram behind me. We're gonna go from Ohio to Kentucky. Don't be scared. Check the fluid. Check the temps. Ready to rock. It is 6.30 in the morning or so. And we are off and running. Leaving Central Ohio, about five and a half hours to Kentucky. I'm excited. This Dodge is ripping. All right, let's keep on trucking.
We made it to Beach Bend Park in Bowling Green. We did it, we did it, we did it. All the way from Pennsylvania, 830 miles in this untested, been sitting since 2001, kick-ass Dodge 440. This thing is unbelievable. It has been a wild ride. I have huffed a lot of exhaust fumes for the last couple hours. I'm a little bit woozy, but I'm excited to be here. There's going to be killer Mopars of every size and shape and color and year and pedigree, and I can't wait to check them all out. That is it for this episode of Stay Tuned. Uh, this has been an absolute blast. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.